um, since uh, we do have, I believe, uh, at least six of us uh, here, I'm just counting to make sure I'm getting the right numbers. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, yeah, at least six. Um, I am going to uh, go ahead and call our meeting to order. Uh, we do have a quorum. Uh, so at this time, uh, if you'd like to rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, you're welcome to do so. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, oh, wonderful. Hello, Kathy. Good to have you join us as well. Um, moving on now to uh, 1.3 public comment. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we do not have anyone here for public comments, so I'm going to move ahead now to 1.4, the approval of the minutes. And uh, at this time, would uh, someone like to um, make a motion to approve the minutes from October 22nd, uh, 2020? I so move, Mary Lynn. Thank you. Is I'll there second? All right. It sounds like Mary Lynn Donahue made the motion, and it was seconded by Kathy Norman. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Aye. aye. Wonderful. Um, moving on now to 1.5 correspondence, uh, announcements, and Common Council reports. Um, I, uh, I decided because uh, you never really know how many wonderful citizens might be watching <laughs> our, our meeting that I just wanted to make a quick announcement that um, in light of uh, the news or information that uh, our library director Garrett Erickson will be sharing um, uh, later in our meeting, I just wanted to reinforce the fact that uh, these last few years, our library staff has been quite uh, innovative and creative with really researching some of the best online services that our citizens can uh, utilize. Uh, little did they know that they would be so valuable during a pandemic. They were just trying to do it uh, because they are extraordinary leaders in library science. But I just wanted to remind everyone that there's wonderful opportunities that you can uh, download wonderful uh, books and audio books through Libby. These brochures are in the, our lobby on the first floor. They are also uh, uh, detailed uh, quite nicely on our website. Uh, but you can also get wonderful books. There's a whole pamphlet of incredible magazines that you can uh, download. And because everyone has so much free time on their hands, you could learn a new language. Our library card will allow you to access the Rosetta Stone, which is a phenomenal uh, website and really allowing you to learn a new language. Uh, so I wanted to share that. And uh, going along with my theme that people have lots of uh, time, uh, we also have this incredible service that you can utilize with your library card called Canopy. And it allows you to uh, download some incredible films and documentaries. And then finally, the last two, I would just share that there's uh, another great resource of books and, and videos and documentaries called Hoopla. And finally, because some of you like to be really challenged, uh, maybe even more so than learning a new language, there are over 360 different online uh, courses, Gale courses. And so if you've ever wanted to learn accounting, if you wanted to be just like Debbie, you could really look into these accounting classes. Uh, there's also language classes, law, writing, teaching, education. So I just thought I would use this moment as announcements to just share that there's these incredible services that Melissa always talks about at the end of our meeting, but I just wanted to bring it up at the beginning. And for anyone who's watching this, uh, meeting, please know that you can sign up for a library card or renew your library card online. So that is www.meadpl.org. I'm looking at Garrett to make sure I'm saying it correct. But anyway, so those are my happy announcements. Uh, we just have a lot of great resources and uh, going into these winter months, I think they will be uh, uh, 
most uh, appreciated by uh, your family. So take a look at them. So uh, with that, I think I will move right along now to the committee reports uh, 2.1 uh, with our finance report. And I'm just looking to see if uh, we have Kyle on. Kyle, no. Nope. Okay, so, um, so Garrett, do you want to? Oh, uh, Debbie's on. Okay, okay so Debbie, terrific. So I, at 2.1, yep. uh, Debbie, if you would like to give uh, the overview of just the finance report. Yep, I spoke with Kyle and we went over the financials and he approved all the accounts payable. We went through those and there wasn't anything out of the, un out of the ordinary because, I mean, there's just not a lot going on. Um, we did get two more donations since that I can announce that we got, since I emailed out the donations, we got $300 in memory of Henry Young for book purchases and book plates. Mm -hmm. And then the friends we, gave me the last check for their donation for 2020. So their total donation for this year was 17000 mm -hmm. And um, the financials, we look to be in good shape. We're at we're at about 80%, which is about where we should be at this time of year as we have November and December to go. So that would be about, you know, we're right in there when I calculate out the percentage. So, and I did send those financials out if anybody has any questions. Okay. So at this time, would someone like to make a motion to approve the payment of expenditures and accept the gifts that were detailed? This is Meg, I'll move. Thank you, Meg. Is there someone who would like to second? Second, Sherry. Uh, so Sherry has seconded and Meg had uh, made the motion. Any further discussion? All, the, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So, um, uh, th th this is Maeve. I'm just wondering if someone has their mic on and they might want to mute it because we're getting some additional <laughs> conversations here. Thank you. Um, so, uh, moving on then to uh, the committee reports of 2.2 Human Resources Committee. Uh, Kathy Norman as our chair. Okay, the, the main thing that we're working on right now is our evaluation tool for, um, it, it's the time of year when we do Garrett's evaluation. So we took the evaluation tool we used last year and we're updating a little bit to reflect um, some of the more strategic things that Garrett has had to deal with um, in this strange year that we're in. Um, and then we also have modified the table of organization slightly. Um, that's mostly updating job descriptions and, and recognizing Debbie's, um, we changed Debbie's title. And so I think, Garrett, when, when it comes to that TO part of the discussion, are you going to leave that? Uh, just one moment. We're, okay. we're having technical. <laughs> okay. I'm up to, okay, what was the question? I didn't hear that. I, I, I'm sorry, what was that last bit, Kathy? We just had some technical issues here on our end. Okay, well, it's just the other thing that the HR committee has been dealing with is the TO, um, and that's an item for discussion and action at 3.1. So I'm going to let Garrett present the TO when we get to that. Sure. All right. And then um, it's, it's my understanding that uh, as a Board of Trustees, we will be getting an email from you in the near future uh, in regards to the evaluation for our library director. And with a... Yep. So when the tool is finished, every um, the evaluation tool goes out to the head of the foundation board, the head of the friends board, all of Garrett's direct reports, and then everyone on this board. So you'll be getting that shortly, and then we hope that you'll turn it around. It's going to be in a survey monkey form, and then we would like it back within a week or so after you get it. We'll indicate the, the due date. Great. And then. Uh... Uh, the HR committee will meet, and then that is the, the reason why we are having a very short but uh, special session of the board in December, just to focus on the evaluation of our library director. So that is uh, what, that's how we're ending our 2020 year. <laughs> so, 
All right, uh, any questions or comments for Kathy? All right, uh, moving on then to section number three, 3.1, uh, the table of organization. I will uh, turn this over to our library director, Garrett Erickson. So the first one, 3.1, is pretty simple. Um, last month, uh, the board approved a uh, change in title for Debbie D'Amico. Um, the problem that we were trying to solve is that there were two business managers in the city who had vastly different tasks that they were assigned to do. And so we changed Debbie's uh, title to administrative services manager so there was no issue over at HR. And really this is just administrative that we wanted to um, update the TO with the, the latest name, the title change, excuse me. And so that's all that, that has changed here. So if someone wants to make a motion and get this approved. <clears throat> All right, I will move to approve the new table of organization. All right, Kathy, it's moved. I second. This is, Chris. this is Chris, and I second. All right, and Chris has seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries, thank you. Moving on now to 3.2, Foundation 2021 List of Approved Projects. I will turn that back over to uh, Garrett Erickson. So the 2021 wish list is something that the staff puts together, uh, or they put together the wish list each year. Um, that's mainly Melissa Prentice uh, soliciting ideas from staff as, and the other managers. Um, so in your attachments on board docs, you can see what we had requested of the foundation for this year. I think we may have discussed this already, but however, um, since the last meeting, the foundation did um, approve it at, at their full foundation board meeting. And so this is uh, what we came up with. And so they did um, gift about almost $45,000 worth of materials. And so um, we do f find that that's um, the, the foundation had a discussion about it again yesterday, and that's something that they can hopefully afford to do. The markets have been pr pretty good right, right now, so we're hoping that they hold up. Um, I guess I can just open this up for any questions on particular items in there that we want to discuss. And, you know, once again, uh, sort of an annual moment where we pause and just recognize just uh, with uh, deep gratitude uh, to, for this uh, Mead Public Library Foundation in providing these additional funds for us to really get some uh, wonderful resources and materials for our library. Uh, it's greatly needed and appreciated. Would, if there are no questions or comments, would someone like to make a motion to accept the uh, approved list of projects? This is Mary Lynn, so move. This is Meg, I'll second. Thank you both. Dave, uh, I did have one question. Mm -hmm. Maeve? Yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, um, the staff appreciation, uh, was that a $1,000 or 10000 That should be $1,000. I see the comma in there now. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, it's not 100000 <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> thanks for pointing that out. That'd be a he heck of a lot of appreciation. <laughs> yeah. And well deserved. So, oh. thank you. Thanks. Uh, if only we could, right? Mm. So at least it shows our, we would love to be able to do that. But uh, thank you, Mary Lynn. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Uh, and then next up, uh, 3.4, Common Council approval of 2021 Actually, budget. Actually, yeah, 3.3, Maeve. So, excuse me, whoop, I j jumped right over on the COVID. Can you tell hmm. how, I, how I feel like we've been spending a lot of time on COVID? Yes, please, 3.3, .3, COVID service was I think we're all sick of this one, but <laughs> so uh, just to kind of let the board know um, what's happened in the last week or so. So we did have one, uh, we've actually had two staff members test positive. One person, the first person though, sort of worked in the evenings by themselves, more on the, the maintenance and cleaning crew type of work. So. Um, they didn't have a lot of exposure to other staff. However, we did have a, a staff person that's in one of the common areas test positive last week. And um, this person got it from outside the library, we believe, um, fairly certain of that. However, they, uh, Melissa Prentice went back and did uh, quite a bit of internal tracing um, since the public health department really is not 
able to help us with that sort of function at this point since they're overwhelmed. So Melissa traced back at least three other staff members that had over 15 minutes of cumulative contact with this person, which is what the CDC uh, calls a close contact. So we had to ask those folks to stay home uh, in addition to the person that was positive um, starting on Thursday of last week. Now, it, um, I think everyone, I believe at this point, most of them, or I think all of them have come back negative, so that was a good thing. Um, at the time that we were uh, notified of the positive test as well, we did go back and contact everyone that was in contact with this person, even if it was under 15 minutes, but we allowed them to continue to come to work and just they just needed to monitor their symptoms. Um, so I guess the hard part for us was just learning First of all, we're doing our own contact tracing, but then also, you know, when a person gets this, it's not just the one person that gets it, it's everyone that they have contacted, and that's the hard part, is we sort of wiped out one area of the library, and it was, the, it was one of the floors, and uh, so it, it hurt us. And so what we decided to do, um, the managers, we, didn't have, we were hoping to talk about this at this meeting, but actually we decided to take action. Melissa really felt that her team was in jeopardy of not being able to carry out services with such a reduction in numbers. And so we decided to pare back the number of floors that we had open. We really struggled with um, wanting to still allow people to come in to self serve uh, to grab their own holds. If everyone needed us to deliver holds, it might be quite intensive outside as curbside. Um, we also have the homeless to think about. We also have folks that uh, come and, and need to use our internet service, and which has been pretty much busy every day. So we had quite a few reasons. We wanted to keep part of the building open, but uh, at the same time, pair it back so we could run it with a few less staff. And so um, that's sort of why we made the decision that we made. Um, we talked to Maeve about it, and she was in agreement that this was a good sort of compromise solution to keep it keep the building open, as well as um, make sure that the staff could could do what they needed to do to help the public out. So um, that's sort of where we are right now. I do anticipate we're going to stay in this status for a while, since there is such a surge. I just hate to, uh, one of the things Melissa stated over and over is she hates to have us go back and forth between opening back full service to cutting back and depending on staffing issues and it really becomes difficult for the public if we're really inconsistent in our hours so we would likely stay the way we are for a time anyways. Um, so that's, that's my thoughts right now. I guess kind of open this up for discussion if anybody has some comments or questions. Would anyone like to any comment or question? Um, and uh, just to talk about just how quickly decisions need to be made, it's also the reason why I kind of sent out a group email to you alerting you of, of these changes and how things are going. Um, and I think they're going as well as, uh, as, well as we can expect. So, mm -hmm. uh, so Looks like there's no questions or comments. Uh, so I think, uh, Garrett, you can take that as a, a confidence from the trustees that you and your team are continuing to make very good decisions about keeping uh, library staff uh, safe as well as keeping our patrons safe. So uh, let's just hope that our community uh, gets a little bit better with uh, this uh, contagious virus so that uh, we can continue to provide more opportunities for people to access all three floors of our library. Mm -hmm. So, okay, and if, moving I'll, on then to yep. three point four, where I tried to go too earlier. Yeah. So, and and this is just an update, uh, nothing to be decided. But the Common Council did uh, work through their final stage of the uh, approval of the twenty twenty one budget. Nothing has changed for the library that was presented since last time. So, um, take that as a good thing. So, and then we'll start over for next year soon. <laughs> so, great. Yeah. All right, uh, then we're moving on to the director's uh, of report, or I should say the more official director's of report, mm -hmm. uh, 4.1 update on services and programming. So although we don't have a lot of programming going on right now, I'll hand this over to Melissa to talk about um, some of the things her team are, are doing right now. Hi, everyone. This is Melissa. Um, I'll give you a quick update on 
um, what some of our programs are looking like recently. Um, I think uh, last time we met, I mentioned the drive-through Comic-Con that we were doing. Uh, that was uh, quite successful. We had 85 people uh, come through and collect free comic books and other um, swag from our program partners, including Gaming Generation um, and the Game Board. Uh, we also had a uh, hands-on pop art workshop um, last weekend that was quite successful as well. 40 people participated in that. Um, and that was kind of a, a new setup that we're trying for some of our virtual programs where we have um, a kit of material that people come to the library to pick up and then they use those items during the online workshop. So um, that seems to be really successful. People uh, like that hands-on element. Um, while also having that interaction with folks during the workshop. Um, and then looking at things um, both in progress and, and um, coming up, we are doing the Wizard Academy as a partnership with Dare to Dream Theater. That has been wildly successful so far. Um, it's a series of six sessions on Saturdays um, where kids and teens um, can sign up to do basically uh, STEM type learning activities that are focused on uh, the Harry Potter world. So uh, for session one, we had 50 participants and session two had uh, 42. And looking ahead to things we have planned in December, we're continuing with our story time kits, our craft kits, and uh, we're also working on a New Year's Eve party pack for kids so they can come to the library and get a package of, of fun stuff to do, craft bubbles. Um, we'll have a dance party mix on our YouTube channel that they can tune into as well. Um, so that's fun and exciting. And um, just to uh, follow up a little bit on what Garrett mentioned about our changes from COVID, uh, this is our first week at that reduced uh, service level, and um, the first couple days were a little wild, to be honest, uh, because we were uh, doing things totally differently and with significantly less staff, and we were pulling in staff from other floors and work areas that um, had maybe never worked the circulation desk or hadn't done it in many, many years, um, and we really have seen a surge, actually, in usage of our computers. I believe a lot of that is connected to this being the open enrollment period for ACA. Um, a lot of folks coming in to uh, complete that sign up. Um, also, lots of folks needing assistance with um, unemployment filing and things like that. So uh, the computer service is absolutely essential. Um, that's become very clear to me, faxing and printing as well. Um, so regardless of, of what form um, our services in the future, that is going to be something that we have to always keep in mind, that that technology access is something that our community is very much in need of. Um, now that we're almost through the week and we have some staff coming back to work, things have eased up quite a bit. Um, I would say our total gate count is um, overall up from where it was last month. Um, which is sort of surprising uh, given wh where our infection rates are. But again, I, I think that speaks to the need in the community to access some of those resources. Um, the good news is we, uh, Chase has set us up with this um, gate counting software where we can get a, a real-time capture of how many people are in the building at any time. So while our total gate count for the day might hit 500, we're never, it doesn't appear that we ever have more than 30 people in the building at one time. Um, so that still feels uh, reasonably safe to me, given the other precautions that we have in place. Um, and that's all I have for updates, unless there's questions. Hey, doesn't look like this. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, I was, just, I was wondering if, you're going to be sending anything to the school district about the New Year's Eve thing? Yes, um, we do uh, keep regular communication with the uh, school districts. Um, I can't remember the job title, but we call we call her uh, their Josh, um, <laughs> who does the communications. Um, she does help share some of our programming information with the school district. 
I think that's Nicole Fundali, maybe. I think yeah, you're right. right. Yes, it's right. It's okay. Nicole. Great. Because I am back in the district and I'm subbing again, virtual. Hmm. So I didn't know if you had a, a contact person, but you do. So that's great. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll move on in the director's report. Cheryl, did you have anything from the support services team? Um, just a couple of things. Uh, so, and most of this is from our technical services department, our catalogers. Uh, they've finished reclassifying our poetry collection and we are hoping to move that collection down to the first floor. Um, uh, depending on a wish list item for some shelving. Uh, we're also working on adding additional items to the Library of Things catalog, some Arduino kits. Uh, the third floor is also working on some cool STEM kits that, that we'll be adding. And I just wanted to mention that we will be most likely pulling staff, our, some of our cataloging staff from tech services to come up and help at some of the service desks in the, the coming weeks, just to help out with the staffing. Thank you, Cheryl. So uh, kind of going back to that first thing, we've been debating where poetry should be for years, whether that should be on the second floor in the nonfiction area or in fiction area. So um, <laughs> and it, it, when you go back and have to relabel a whole section, it, it takes quite a while. And so we've been, the technical services staff in between the normal acquisitions process has been trying to relabel different titles and, and place them uh, and make the labels easier to read as well as placing them in different areas and so on. And so um, it's a lot of work. So I appreciate them doing all that work. I think it's, um, we've had some really good feedback on the things they've done so far. So then uh, moving on to update on building projects 4.3, just a few things going on. Um, the biggest thing right now at the library is we're doing an update of our office furniture. So getting like cubicle uh, in place. In the past, we've had uh, very, very old furniture. In fact, you could go down the line and you'd see something from the 50s, something 60s, something 70s and so on when we look at the dates on them. And so it hasn't really been done uh, throughout the whole building at one time. And now with COVID, we think that this is really a time that we can help staff stay, stay safer with having a little bit higher profile desks, as well as um, there's ergonomic pieces that we were looking at even before COVID where um, now you have those sit to stand desks. And so we're putting those in place now. This is something that the foundation helped us with as well as the, the, well, the 850 money that we used. Um, so this project right now, we've gotten through the technical services staff in the basement, as well as admin. Um, I believe they're very close on finishing the children's area on the third floor. And they've started to work now on the second floor staff. So, and the final piece will be on the first floor area, all the staff in there. So it's a very big project and, and it makes people clear out um, their, their desk area, which hasn't been cleared out maybe in a long, long time. So it's been really good in some cases. So um, that's probably the biggest project going on. We're also uh, very near to starting to redo our staff lounge. There's very old furniture in there and, and uh, the appliances in there haven't worked very well for a while. In fact, when um, our maintenance staff and I believe Debbie were in there for the, uh, to show what we're looking for when they pulled the oven door open to show them the oven, the inside, the door fell off. So I guess it's time that we get that updated as well. Um, and then finally, the third thing that we're really kind of focused on is now that we're closed again for the upper floors, um, the maintenance staff had painted a bunch of the third floor when we were closed earlier this spring. They're going to try and attack the second floor um, while they have some time without the public being in there. So it's a great opportunity for them to try and add some other colors and update the, the second floor area. So those are some of the major projects going on right now. Um, does anyone have any questions on those? Okay, uh, thank you for the update on the building projects. 4.4, uh, the monthly statistics. Is there anything of note that we should look, pay attention to in this very unique year of COVID? <laughs> it seems like uh, it's 
sort of follow the same path that we're on. Again, I mean, we're looking at the gate count. We're almost at down about 50%. So um, very near um, to 50% from last year. And so again, e-content is up. And as you've stated, our, our holds and so on seem to be like bumping way up. I guess as Melissa pointed out, the other interesting thing on here is um, just this last month or so, we've noticed a real uptake tick in the use of our internet's workstations. Um, so perhaps that, that is as well as Melissa pointed out, the, AW, the ACA applications again for the year, that would make a lot of sense, as well as um, job continued to uh, job applicants coming in. And I know through Melissa and some of the staff that uh, the people coming in, some of them to sign up for uh, jobs have very little experience. And that's the struggle is that we give them an hour, but yet they, um, they may just need to set up an email account and they haven't done that before. And so it may be someone that lost their job and doesn't have that skill set. So our staff have to walk them through how to set up an email account and so on. So it's, it's quite a bit of work. So um, just a thought on that, just because, you know, I, we all look at the monthly statistics. Um, is it a value to sort of have a, um, a tally or just uh, keep track of, you know, the number of citizens we're helping with a Gmail account, with job search? I mean, is, you know, it's, it's challenging because I think once we allow, the, you know, give them the access to the Internet, we're not really monitoring, you know, what job... Um, but I don't know if there is any value in trying to keep track of that particular service that we're providing at the library. Maybe to tell a story to you know, uh, the council if it was needed, but I know, Melissa, you've done a lot of work on our statistics over the years. Is that something we've done before? Uh, we have actually um, done some tracking of uh, customer service interactions by kind of topic or type to, mm -hmm. um, to get an idea of, uh, we did that once when we were still doing guest passes for computer access um, as opposed to library card access. So um, that's probably something that uh, we could do kind of a moment in time capture um, how many of the computer interactions are related to uh, job searching or um, filing for unemployment, healthcare, that kind of thing, and uh, share that information. I, yeah, I just think that data is just so valuable because it shows a whole different facet of service that um, maybe people are not really aware that the library really uh, provides for people who really have no other place to get that service and it's critical for their full uh, participation in our community. So. Yeah, the struggle right now is the job center is not uh, what it once was. They've got, uh, they're closed down in the office, from my, my, is my understanding, as well as their staff have been repurposed to really help out with uh, unemployment application forms rather than helping people search for jobs. So that, that means we're trying to pick up some of that slack. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Um, uh, moving on then to uh, 5.1, the Monarch Library System. And... In looking, I don't think Nancy is uh, has been able to join us unless <laughs> unless that is the person who's waiting for the name <laughs> NA. <laughs> so, um, so I think we will just hold on the liaison liaison report from Monarch until uh, our, the next time we meet in uh, January. Um, Five point two, the Mead Library uh, Foundation. Uh, we did uh, meet yesterday. Uh, and uh, the highlights that uh, I, can, uh, I can share is that uh, the foundation um, uh, decided that instead of having the annual um, luncheon for the advisory committee, these are uh, members of the foundation that have uh, uh, since stepped down and are no longer part of the foundation. We have, uh, for the last couple of years, invited them once a year to really kind of get an update of what the library is doing, what the library is considering in the future, to really get their feedback and also to provide them with more information of how they can really be ambassadors for Mead Public Library out in the public. Uh, so we could not do the luncheon, uh, 
that is always beautifully put together by Marilyn Montemayor um, this year due to COVID, but instead we, um, Jim Williams coordinated a uh, lovely a box of cookies uh, that was also uh, contributed to by uh, Field to Fork. Uh, so Stefano and Whitney Rigoletti uh, uh, participated in uh, a donation of uh, the labor in putting together these lovely cookies. Um, and. Uh, several of us delivered them to various uh, former foundation members, and it was uh, uh, very happily received. We brought a lot of joy uh, as we literally put cookies on a porch, rang the doorbell, and like stepped away. Like I felt, felt like I was doing a, the child thing of uh, you know running away after ringing a doorbell, but uh, <laughs> I did wave to people and chat with them from a distance. Um, so uh, that was well received. Uh, the other component that the foundation um, is, is working on is the recognition that the way we recognize our Renaissance Society members and their lovely levels of giving uh, on the wall that's on the wall where the elevators are, it's, it's run out of space for names, which is a wonderful, wonderful problem to have that we have so many members. Uh, but we are now looking at how uh, how can, you know, what, what is the next step? How can we recognize and yet communicate and celebrate what the foundation has done for the library? So the development uh, committee is looking at the criteria and then we'll be exploring some different options and providing that to the board to consider. And then, um, and then the, uh, the other piece was that we also uh, uh, went through and uh, Several members of the foundation were uh, up for potential renewal of their term, and we are grateful and uh, thrilled to report that everyone said that they wanted to continue on. So uh, we have lots of uh, wonderful, talented people continuing on to support the foundation. And then, Kathy, I didn't know if you wanted to share anything in particular in regards to the finances, but um, I thought overall our meeting went quite well. And, uh, and I think I mentioned last month that uh, due to COVID, we are not having a, uh, a Yuletide uh, reception, and we're hoping that we might be able to have something next year um, uh, when it's a little bit safer for everyone to gather. So. Yeah, I will just add a couple things. So yeah, the, the, the finance committee of the foundation board has met and just recently, and we went over the finances and we're really, um, uh, having a good revenue stream, which is what enables us to uh, finance the wish list. So the investments are doing really well at the foundation level. Um, but I thought I would let you, the rest of you also know that Bernie Markovich, who is the board chair of the foundation board, um, is ill right now, and he's at St. Nicholas Hospital, and he has COVID. So everybody, just keep Bernie in your thoughts, um, and hopefully he'll get better quickly. We just got a report but during this meeting. Um, Carol Colzo checked in with him today, and apparently he gave her permission to share the news that he's um, at St. Nicholas Hospital, but he doesn't want anyone to call him because he, you know, doesn't feel well enough right. to talk. Um, and and I'm so just I'm just the best. yeah I'm just going to jump in. Yeah, I he has requested that we not share that at this meeting because it's a public meeting. So uh, oh. so. Uh, okay. So, so I, I will follow up with everyone via email in a little bit. So, um, whoop, goodness, uh, is there, whoop. <laughs> um, so, uh, with, with, uh, that, I believe the next, uh, foundation, um, meeting is, uh, the foundation meeting will be meeting next, I believe, in January. Yeah. Correct, Kathy? I, I think it's. I think the foundation will meet next in Jan, in January. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, moving on then to um, friends of of Mead, five point three. So Hello. I don't. So <laughs> the friends have not met. Um, since October, and um, they will not meet for the remainder of the year. They're going to have a social in December, um, hopefully, if that works out okay, but they're, for the most part, really just kind of plugging away at book sales right now, um, both in the bookstore as well as um, really focusing online and trying to get sales that way. 
And I think that most of the friends are doing um, pretty strenuous social distancing right now. So I haven't seen or heard from a ton of them, um, but the email flow has gone around. So definitely everybody's getting a little stir crazy, but is doing okay. All right. Any questions or comments for the friends? All right. Um, the last thing that I would just say is we will be having another special library board meeting sometime in December. So I know that Sydney is expecting, I think she just needs to hear back from a couple of you uh, from the doodle of what works for you. Uh, the only item on the agenda will be our evaluation of our library director, which we do need to do prior to January 1st of 2021. Uh, so stay tuned for that future date. Otherwise, uh, I will look forward to seeing all of you uh, on the computer screen uh, uh, January uh, 28th of 2021. I don't know about you, but that just sounds so futuristic. <laughs> but uh, I guess that's where we are. So um, any other uh, thoughts? Otherwise, uh, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I have a question oh. uh, to Sydney. Um, I didn't get the minutes for last meeting in October till about five minutes before this meeting. So Sydney, are you still having trouble with delayed email sends? Yes, we've had troubles with it all week. Um, so what I think what had happened was I sent out HR minutes instead of board minutes. Even though I labeled them board minutes, they were HR minutes. So I did send those out, um, and I apologize about that. And I think that the issue with the email is resolved now, um, but I'm nervous about it. So if y'all are nervous about it, you're welcome to email me at my personal email address, too. Um, the issue is solved, and it's been working okay all day. So. All right. All right, so at this point, uh, would someone like to make a motion? to adjourn our meeting. So move. Been second. Okay, moved and second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. Uh, stay safe, everyone, and I'll see you sometime in December. And I get to see the HR committee before then, so <laughs> see you later. Mm -hmm.